haven't been making much music, man. My my focus is not there. My confidence is not there. Um, I tinker. I tinker a lot. One of my homies told me, like, after I finished Hey Ya and I played it for him, he said, man, if you put that out, man, your career is over. So then, and then, like, later on down the line, they said he had passed away. It was, like, real shocking, but I feel that what the Lord does is, like, put things in front of you to show you, like, lessons. I mean, like, it goes back to the e even the easy e thing. The more higher you climb, the, better, the more success that you have, you become more and more isolated. Yeah. You spend the more time in hotels. Better. Yeah. You spend less, less time around, around people. He was one of the most innovative rappers to ever hit the scene, half of the iconic duo Outkast, and a pioneer in bringing Southern rap to the mainstream. But then, just when the world expected more, Andre 3000 disappeared from the spotlight. What made one of the greatest musical minds of our time walk away from it all? Was it personal demons, betrayal, or something even deeper? You can't take your kid to the park and play because people will was follow you. Let's dive into the shocking truth behind Andre 3000's departure from the music industry. And trust me, what he reveals will leave you stunned. Andre 3000 was not just a rapper, he was a movement. But how did someone with so much creativity and passion for music suddenly go silent? What was the real reason behind his exit? Did he sabotage his career on purpose? I don't even know what I am, and maybe I'm nothing. Maybe I'm not supposed to be anything. Maybe, yeah. you know, my history is kind of handicapping in a way. Or was he blackballed by the very industry that once praised him? <laughs> Andre 3000. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no shit, right? Like, you, like when you say Andre 3000, you gotta pause now. From mental health struggles to the pressures of fame and shocking industry betrayals, today we uncover the bombshells Andre 3000 himself dropped. The rise of Andre 3000 and Outkast. It all began in the early 90s when a young duo from Atlanta, Andre Benjamin and Antoine Patton, better known as Andre 3000 and Big Boy, exploded onto the hip hop scene with their groundbreaking album, Southern Playalistica de la Music. Outkast's debut album, Southern Playalistica de la Music, was more than just a successful debut. It was the defining moment for Southern rap. Prior to its release in 1994, the mainstream hip-hop industry was heavily dominated by the East and West Coasts. The genre's biggest names at the time hailed from New York or Los Angeles, with the South being mostly overlooked. Andre 3000 and Big Boy, two teenagers from Atlanta, saw this void as an opportunity. With their smooth Southern drawls and laid-back but fiercely poetic lyricism, they carved a space for themselves in a scene that had long been overshadowed by other regions. Players Ball, their breakout single, perfectly encapsulated the South's unique perspective and lifestyle, offering a narrative unlike anything the industry had seen. The track was originally released as a Christmas single but exploded in popularity, peaking at number 37 on the Billboard Hot 100. For a young duo without the backing of a massive coastal label, this was unprecedented. The world was ready for something new, and Outkast's debut laid the groundwork for what would later become the Dirty South movement in hip-hop. Their success was the start of an era, one that would see Atlanta emerge as the heart of Southern hip-hop, producing icons like T.I., Lil Wayne, and Young Thug. But at the forefront of this movement were Andre and Big Boy, whose partnership quickly became a defining feature of their artistry. Yes. yes. And um Yes. And so people do stuff to try to just numb that pain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Outcast wasn't just another rap group, they were trailblazers. While hip hop was dominated by East Coast and West Coast styles, Outkast introduced a Southern flavor that no one could ignore. And with Andre's eccentric style and unparalleled lyricism, the duo redefined what Southern rap could be. Andre 3000 was never content with the status quo. From the very beginning, he pushed himself and his art to new levels. His eccentricity, both in fashion and lyricism, set him apart from his peers. Where many rappers conformed to the industry's demands for commercial success, Andre and Big Boy's approach was different. They weren't afraid to experiment. The themes in Southern playalistic idyllic music went beyond the typical bravado, violence, and materialism that dominated rap at the time. Instead, it celebrated Southern black culture, critiqued systemic racism, and reflected on the complexities of growing up in Atlanta. 
What made Andre 3000 particularly special was his ability to merge complex lyricism with a soulful, almost spiritual sense of creativity. His writing was intricate, with layered metaphors, storytelling, and an introspective edge. He wasn't just rapping about the streets, he was reflecting on life's deeper meanings. From Southern playalistic idyllic music to Ateliens and beyond, Andre and Big Boy redefined Southern hip-hop with each subsequent album, merging traditional Southern sounds like funk and blues with modern rap and even psychedelic elements. With every new album, Outkast pushed boundaries, Andre 3000 even more so. He wasn't just rapping, he was experimenting with new sounds, new genres, and pushing himself creatively in ways that no other rapper had done before. I think that Andre 3000 may be the prince, you know, like the Roger Nelson, Prince Roger Nelson of hip-hop. In 1996, Outkast released Aliens, a follow-up that completely shattered the expectations set by their debut. Where Southern Playalistica Deluxe Music celebrated their Southern roots, Aliens took a more introspective and otherworldly approach. Andre's lyrics were infused with existential musings, spirituality, and social commentary, making it clear that he was not just a rapper, he was a visionary. Outkast was no longer simply a Southern hip-hop act. They were global stars creating art that transcended genre boundaries. As their fame grew, so did Andre's willingness to take risks. And this became even more evident with their next album, Aquamini, 1998. The album fused elements of jazz, blues, funk, and soul with hip-hop, creating a sound that was completely unique. Andre's willingness to experiment with sounds, flows, and lyrical content kept Outkast ahead of their peers. Critics and fans alike were blown away by his ability to seamlessly merge genres, crafting songs that could be club hits, radio singles, or introspective deep cuts. Andre was also evolving stylistically. By this point, he had completely transformed his image, from a simple Southern rapper to an otherworldly, almost extraterrestrial figure in the hip-hop world. As their fame grew, so did the pressure on Andre. While Big Boy was more grounded, Andre was always searching for something deeper, something more meaningful in his art. But that quest for creativity came with a heavy cost. Outkast's fourth studio album, Stanconia, 2000, cemented their legacy in hip-hop history. The album's explosive single, Miss Jackson, became their first track to reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100, while tracks like Bob, Bombs Over Baghdad, showcased Andre's experimental approach to music, blending elements of funk, electronic music, and rapid-fire lyrical delivery. By this point, Andre was widely regarded as one of the most innovative and influential rappers of his generation. However, this relentless pursuit of creativity came at a cost. As Andre continued to push boundaries, he became increasingly introspective. He felt the weight of expectations from fans, the industry, and himself. While Big Boy remained grounded in the music, Andre began to distance himself from the pressures of fame, often expressing his discomfort with the industry in interviews. He no longer found satisfaction in just making hit records. He was searching for something deeper, something that the fame and success of Outkast couldn't provide. As their fame grew, so did Andre's internal struggles. And though they would go on to release more music, including the critically acclaimed speaker box, The Love Below, Andre's relationship with the industry was slowly unraveling. His quest for meaning, both in his art and in his life, had only just begun, and it would eventually lead him to a major decision, to step away from the industry altogether. The struggles behind the fame. Andre 3000 was never comfortable with the fame that came with being a superstar. Despite his larger-than-life persona on stage and in music videos, the man behind the icon was a deeply introspective individual who often struggled with the pressures of the music industry. From early on, he spoke in openly in interviews about how the attention, the expectations, and the constant spotlight weighed heavily on him. I just didn't know where else to go. You know, I didn't... Fame, for Andre, wasn't the glamorous dream that most people aspire to. In fact, it became more of a burden. While Outkast was enjoying success beyond their wildest dreams, topping charts, winning Grammys, and redefining Southern hip-hop, Andre was quietly grappling with the overwhelming demands of the industry. The deeper Outkast got into the business, the more the pressures mounted. Record labels wanted hit after hit, fans expected them to continuously innovate, and the media's scrutiny became incessant. For Andre, this wasn't just a professional challenge, it was deeply personal. With uh, social anxiety disorder, like I was diagnosed years 
years ago mm-hmm. and hypersensitivity. Mm-hmm. Like with that kind of thing, isolation is not good. For Andre, the constant need to outdo himself wasn't just a creative challenge, it was a burden. As someone who prided himself on pushing boundaries and reinventing himself, he began to feel boxed in by the industry's expectations. This led him to start questioning his place in hip hop and more importantly, in the world. By the early 2000s, Andre found himself struggling with the immense weight of expectations. While his creativity had always been his strength, it also became his greatest source of anxiety. The very thing that set him apart, the pressure to innovate, was the same thing that drained him. His drive to push the envelope was now causing him to feel trapped. He knew the industry expected him to continuously evolve, but he no longer felt that spark. Instead, he started to feel like he was repeating himself, which went against everything he believed in as an artist. It didn't help that hip-hop itself was changing. The music industry became more commercialized, with artists being pressured to churn out radio-friendly hits. This commercial success often came at the expense of artistic freedom, and Andre wasn't willing to compromise his authenticity for fame. But even as he tried to stay true to himself, the expectations from both fans and the industry began to suffocate him. The pressure to deliver not just just good music, but groundbreaking, trend-setting art was relentless, and the more successful Outkast became, the higher the stakes. After the release of Idlewild in 2006, Andre began to distance himself from the music scene. The film and accompanying soundtrack, while ambitious, didn't meet the massive expectations set by their previous projects. It was clear that Andre was becoming disillusioned with the whole process. Following the film's release, both Andre and Big Boy went their separate ways to pursue solo careers. Though they maintained a friendship, it was apparent that the chemistry that had defined their earlier work had shifted. In 2014, Outkast reunited to celebrate their 20th anniversary by performing at Coachella. But the highly anticipated reunion was far from a triumphant return. Instead, it was a stark reminder of the disconnect between the two artists, particularly Andre, and the fame they had once embraced. The 2014 Coachella performance was meant to be a celebration of two decades of groundbreaking music, but it turned out to be a disaster. For those who witnessed it, the reunion seemed forced, with Andre clearly uncomfortable on stage. In fact, he admitted later that the performance felt inauthentic to him. He no longer felt connected to the music he was performing, and the pressure to be Andre 3,000 inches in front of a massive audience was overwhelming. In an interview with GQ, Andre reflected on the fallout from the Coachella performance. There's a certain chemistry that me and Big Boy had and have, he told the magazine. I think over time, people don't understand that chemistry changes. He added that for him, it wasn't just about the music anymore. It was about whether he even wanted to be famous again. There's been so many times in my mind where I thought I was done. So it wasn't even a struggle. It wasn't like, what am I going to do now? Even during all of this, I remember a couple weeks ago talking to my manager and publicist, I really had to ask myself, do I want to be famous again? Andre admitted that the answer was a clear no. I kind of like my solitary kind of chill life. Andre's discomfort with fame wasn't a new development. He had always struggled with the limelight, but by this point in his career, it had become unbearable. In candid interviews, Andre confessed that he often felt lost. Despite being hailed as one of the most influential artists of his generation, he didn't know who he was anymore. Part of the reason Andre stepped away from music was that he genuinely didn't feel like he had anything to say. In the November 2023 GQ Men of the Year issue, he explained, I've worked with some of the newest, freshest, youngest, and old school producers. I get beats all the time, I try to write all the time, he said. Even now, people think, oh man, he's just sitting on raps, or he's just holding these raps hostage. I ain't got no raps like that. Andre's honesty about his creative block was surprising to many, considering his reputation for lyrical brilliance. But to him, it was simple. It actually feels, sometimes it feels inauthentic for me to rap because I don't have anything to talk about in that way. I'm 48 years old. And not to say that age is a thing that dictates what you rap about, but in a way it does. And things that happen in my life, like what are you talking about? I gotta go get a colonoscopy. What are you rapping about? My eyesight is going bad. Andre compared his current stage in life to that of a retired boxer. Look at the greatest boxers now, he said. What do they do? They do exhibition fights every now and then, but they're not stepping in the ring. You know what I mean? For Andre, continuing to rap without the same passion or purpose felt like stepping into the ring for a fight he no longer cared to win. 
After the Outcast reunion, Andre went back to what he was comfortable doing, being on his own. For some artists, the transition away from the group that made them famous is difficult, but for Andre, it was almost a relief. He no longer had to carry the weight of expectations. By the time Outcast reunited at Coachella, Andre had already spent years distancing himself from the spotlight. He wasn't interested in regaining fame. He simply wanted to create music on his own terms. In the same GQ interview, he admitted that he was constantly questioning whether he wanted to be famous again. The answer remained the same, no. But at the same time, Andre acknowledged that he still had a desire to promote the music, which put him in a difficult position. He was torn between his passion for creating art and his discomfort with the fame that came with it. As for his social anxiety, Andre spoke openly about how it had affected him over the years. And it never goes away, he said. It's not like a cure-all kind of thing. It just becomes a part of life and you just have to take a deep breath, smile a little bit, and just get through it for tomorrow. That's the best I can say. Fame, he admitted, exacerbated his anxiety. He never quite knew how to handle the constant attention from fans, the paparazzi, or the media. People would film him, approach him on the street, and expect him to always be on. For someone as introspective as Andre, this level of attention was not just uncomfortable, it was overwhelming. In therapy, Andre came to realize that the very thing that made him an exceptional artist, his deep introspection and sensitivity, was also the thing that made fame so difficult for him to bear. He recalled one conversation with his therapist, where the therapist told him, the thing that makes your art what it is, is the thing that you don't like either. It was a harsh truth, but one that Andre came to accept. He understood that he couldn't change who he was and that his gift came with its own set of challenges. Rather than trying to fight it, he decided to embrace it. For Andre, stepping away from the spotlight wasn't a failure, it was a necessary part of his journey. While fans may have wanted more music, more appearances, more of the Andre 3000 they knew and loved, Andre had to prioritize his own mental health and well-being. Sabotage or self-protection As he moved away from mainstream hip-hop, Andre found peace in being able to live life on his own terms. His decision to step back wasn't about quitting, it was about finding balance. The fame and success he once chased no longer held the same appeal, and for Andre, that was perfectly okay. He had nothing left to prove. But did Andre 3000 sabotage his career on purpose? Some fans think so. As OutKast reached the height of their success, Andre began distancing himself from the spotlight. He started turning down major projects, refusing to tour, and eventually stopped making music altogether. I haven't been making much music, man. My my focus is not there. My confidence is not there. Um, I tinker. I tinker a lot. Andre himself has admitted that he couldn't handle the pressure of constantly having to top himself. He wanted to step away before the industry chewed him up and spat him out, as it has done to so many artists before him. Who would be in your super group? Uh, probably like, you know, Andre 3000 because he's different. Even other artists have expressed their admiration for Andre, acknowledging that the pressures he faced were unlike anything most artists will ever experience. You know, you don't really find that too much in like artists. Like, just being great human beings in general. You know? For Andre, leaving the industry wasn't just about preserving his creativity, it was about preserving his sanity. Life after music. After stepping away from music, Andre didn't disappear completely. He just shifted his focus. He dabbled in acting, fashion, and other creative pursuits, but never quite returned to the music world in the same way. What is that again? Uh, it's a, a Chinese gourd flute, like a Chinese... In interviews, Andre has expressed that music is still a part of him, but it's not the only thing he's passionate about. He's spoken about how exploring other art forms has helped him stay grounded and avoid the pressures that once overwhelmed him. For Andre, it seems that stepping away from the industry wasn't just a choice, it was a necessity. Meanwhile, fans are proud of Andre for staying true to himself and being honest with his struggles. He's not crazy, just wanted no parts of the industry anymore. He didn't sell out. Much respect, one fan commented. A second fan added, I'm proud of the fact he had the courage and the honesty to admit where he was within himself and make no apologies for it. He doesn't owe the world one more thing. While a third fan wrote, I miss him so much, but I understand the need to walk away from a career when it becomes too much, especially as a person with anxiety. I wish him nothing but happiness. And a fourth fan wrote, Outcast is untouchable. He doesn't have to do anything ever again. That music he made with Big Boy will live on forever. 
Good for him to take care of himself and not try to force Ish or milk his previous greatness. Their run will always be one of the greatest in music history. Now, the big question on everyone's mind is, Will Andre 3000 ever return to the music industry? In interviews, Andre has remained elusive about his future in music. While he hasn't ruled out a return, he's made it clear that if he does come back, it will be on his own terms and at his own pace. Meanwhile, his fans are still waiting, and artists like Kendrick Lamar, ASAP Rocky, and Childish Gambino continue to speak about the impact Andre has had on their careers. The door is open, but only time will tell if Andre 3000 will ever stay step through it again. Andre 3000's story is one of creativity, struggle, and survival. He walked away from the industry at the height of his fame, not because he couldn't handle the success, but because he knew what it would cost him. And while we may never get another Outkast album, his legacy will continue to inspire generations of artists. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.